Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep with me, your host, Grace Ann Helbig. The first, again, as always, a very exciting episode. We have Harvey Gillen. Gillen, I, he told me how to pronounce his name a lot, and I just, I'm, I'm just bad at it. But what he's great at is being a human being. He is hilarious, sweet, funny, fashionable, hardworking. You're going to fall in love with him if you don't already know him. He is hilarious on what we do in the shadows, on FX. He's been actually hustling and making money since he was like six years old. And he's just the most gracious, wonderful human being. So enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with Harvey. All right. <laughs> it's happening. Harvey, I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for having me. Of course. You are killing it right now. I am. I am. Thank you. I guess I am. Yeah. yeah. I'm not killing it because I'm, yeah. Okay. Do you mean the character or do you mean me? <laughs> both. Both. I mean, oh, okay. both. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what we do in the shadows is so fun. I love it. Uh, it's hilarious. And I was so excited when I heard that you were going to be in it. Also, I'm in doing like a little bit of research, you got the audition because you went to a cheese party? I went to Wine and Cheese Night. Okay. So I got a call from my friend Mimi Michaels. Uh, shout out to Mimi. Hey. Um, that uh, she was in town for a couple of days. And she was like, hey, I'm at my brother's house. Uh, in Los Feliz, you should come over and have wine and cheese. And I was at home in my pajamas, literally watching what was next on cue, like for, you know, mm-hmm. online to watch. And the thing that was on cue actually to watch uh, that everyone recommended and I hadn't seen it uh-huh. and I hate myself for it. Um, was what we do in the shadows. And oh, I, that was on your queue? That was in the queue to watch. <laughs> That's nice. And I decided to not watch it. <laughs> and go to the wine and cheese night. <laughs> uh-huh. And I go to the wine and cheese night and I just meet her, like, you know, friend from school and her brother's there and her husband. And we're just having, you know, uh, wine and cheese night, nothing big. Yeah. And the next day I get a text from an unknown number and it's like, hey, you are so fucking funny. Oh, can I cuss? I yes, know, you can. Okay. Absolutely. You can say anything <laughs> you want to hear. just like, uh, you know, thanks so much. Let's hang out. She's like, no, I, I think you should audition for my fiance's new show. Oh, cool. And I was like, I'm not doing those kind of films anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're illegal, all right? Um, and she was like, no, what are you talking about? I'm like, nothing. I'm just joking. What? La, <laughs> she was la, like, yeah. New phone, who dis? Yeah. Ha, ha. And then she was like, no, I'm serious. You should audition because this was about January 8th last year or okay. 9th around that time. We just came back from the holiday break and they've been auditioning since September the following wow. year. Yeah, so I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, they're going to cast this role this week. And I got the script and I was like, I got an audition. And I called and I was like, who's auditioning this? And it's Allison Jones. So if you know Allison Jones, she's cast everything under the sun, like The Office, Bridesmaids, I wow. mean, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Golden Girl, like the list goes Classics. on and on. So I was like, I want to go meet her. Mm-hmm. And I read the script and the character was 20 years older than I was. And I was like, oh, no, I'm too young for the role. And I was like, um, why does she think I could do it? Okay, well, I'll just go in. And I yeah. did it. It's one of those things as an actor when you like do something, you walk away, and I just don't remember what I did. Oh, yeah. You yeah. like black out. And and I blacked like, out. Yeah. And I just like, I don't know what I did. And my, my manager and agent were like, what did you do? And I was like, I don't know. I think you're okay. <laughs> And then, like, four hours later, they had called and said that they showed to FX, Taika, Jermaine, um, Scott, like, everyone everyone just said unanimously, said I would go test for it. Wow. So it wasn't All on like the a, same day? Same day. Wow. And it was, like, unanimous, you're going to go test for it. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to test for it. That's so cool. I'll be the wild card, like, the younger sure. version of this character. And, you know, because you test for stuff all the time. And then they're like, uh, you don't know until the end of the day. Yeah. And then so I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it my way. And I didn't know when it was going to be or when the test was happening. And I just kept waiting and waiting. And I kept getting this phone call from, like, a 16-digit number. And I was mm-hmm. like, God, give me a sign. When is the test? And the phone would ring. And I ignore it because I don't know anybody, you know, <laughs> and who has a 16-digit number. Yeah. And then <laughs> eventually I was like, give me a sign. The phone kept ringing. I was like, who the fuck is it? And I picked up and I was like, hi, is this Harvey? And I was like, yes. Was like, hey, it's Tyke and Jermaine. You auditioned for us and you're the mate. <laughs> and I was like, what? No, I'm testing for it. They're like, no, you're the mate. I'll see you on set. <gasps> what? I, I never tested for it. Really? Tyke and Jermaine called me directly and they're like, yeah, you got it. That's incredible. Isn't that crazy? That's so nuts. Yeah. Also, they didn't leave a message? No, they just kept calling. <laughs> <laughs> they just kept calling me over and over until I got annoyed and I was like, why? So always pick up your phone and always, always go to wine and cheese night. Yeah, I was going to say that um, are two of the most adult pieces of advice yeah. ever. That's very much. I think that's mo- the most adult thing I've ever said. <laughs> yeah. I went to a wine and cheese night and then I answered my phone. Yeah. <laughs> and now like, here I am. This is nuts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how's it been? Has it been a whirlwind? Yeah, it's been crazy. So we wrapped the sh- the series uh, like two days before Christmas. Okay. So that wasn't that long ago, but it, it felt like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Um, and we shoot in Toronto and it cool. was just, you know, we get to improvise and like it was so Yeah, I was so going to cool. say, how much does it stick to a script? Or you I mean, we have script? a script, but we don't really like, you know, uh, we're not sticklers for like every word has to be perfect. Sure. Because we already have amazing writers, so yeah. it's not like... 
you know, it's like like we're oh we have to make this better. It's already good. Like when we get the script, we have amazing writers like Stephanie Robinson, you know, who's from Atlanta. Like she's cool. amazing. I was just talking to her today, and it's just the we just get the liberty to make it like you know more of the character. Like it's like now how would you do that as Guillermo? You know, and that's then we're like, so nice. Yeah, because you're usually on set, and then if you change one word, like that's not what that says. Right, right, right. It says the cat went outside, not the cat left. You know, or yeah, something. and you want to like respect the writers, but you totally. also want to be able to play, which is so yeah. nice to be able to do. I always said. Um, that if I could find a job that I could do that, that would be the dream job, and I found it. That's awesome. And you guys have already been greenlit for season two, right? Season two. That's so exciting. Yeah, we're going to start cool. shooting in the fall. That's so cool. Yeah. How is the energy on set? It seems like everyone's just having a blast. It's like playing hot potato with pros. <laughs> like they're just, the, the potato never falls down. Like you're just like hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. Yeah. It's like 16 hours later, hot, hot potato, hot potato, oh, wow. hot potato. Like you, you, can, you can keep going forever. Like this cast is amazing. We Ugh. had one scene that should have been about two to three minutes long because uh-huh. it wasn't that much dialogue. It was like two pages. And we went for 26 minutes. <laughs> Christ, my God. That's we literally so nuts. 26 minutes and and no one said cut because all, everything was great. But we yeah. knew that none of that was going to be able to, you know, make and it to the, the final cut. And the editor's just like, come on, please. Do I this. have so much respect for our editors because I was like, you have like the worst job because there's so much footage, just yeah. so much. And I don't even know what we're going to do with that extra footage. I don't even know if we're going to put it like into special, you know, Blu ray or whatever. I don't know where it's going to live. Like yeah. it's just out there in the universe and that uh, beautiful, beautiful hole. Fun. Uh, how's the feedback been? I think it's hilarious and you're fantastic at it. It's been great. People have like really just, uh, you know, taken on to the characters and latched on to like, you know, what they love. Like they love the quirkiness of the characters. They love, mm-hmm. well, you know, Guillermo, the hashtag team Guillermo has yeah. been floating around because I feel that we're all Guillermo. We're all yeah. human. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's the only human in the house and he's just endearing where uh, he's all of us. And we've all been out for, you know, a job that we want or sure. a relationship and we think we're being seen a certain way. And it's like, this is definitely a relationship or I'm definitely getting this promotion. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, what? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. you get overlooked for something. And I think everyone can relate to that. So everyone's like, oh, I feel for Guillermo. It's like, you feel for Guillermo because you are Guillermo. You know, yeah. like you feel like- <laughs> <laughs> We're all him. We're all Guillermo. Oh, this is so profound. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, did you get to be on set with Tilda Swinton? I did not. She was talking oh. to me. And you know what's weird about having such a cool episode like that where yeah. if, uh, spoiler, having seen this episode, we have such great cameos. Um, oh, it's fa- I was like, this is nuts. This is crazy. Yeah. But there's no way we could have made everyone's schedule work on the same day. Like, That's you know, true. it's just not going to happen. And so what they were smart, they uh, they shot different actors in different parts. I think she's shot in the UK and someone else shot oh, in wow. LA and we shot in Toronto. Like everyone was everywhere. But That's it's so weird because when you're acting, they're not in front of you. But you know, you're, you right. know, she, that's her. Like, you right. know, that's her talking <laughs> like, to you. I technically so have acted with Tilda I'm going to see her Tilda Swinton, you guys. I don't want to brag, but she doesn't know my name. <laughs> so it was weird because I've seen her and how she played it. And she's all like, what's this? Is this, is this, is this, dinner? you know, yeah. whatever. And you're just like, wow. She's like, she was looking at me even though I wasn't there. <laughs> It's like she knows me, yeah, but she doesn't. She I'm sure me. I'll bump into her and be like, hey, she'll like, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah never and then know. she'll actually float away <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I just imagine that she didn't get any hair and makeup for that scene. Yeah. But that's just how she showed <laughs> up like, that day. Up. <laughs> I would love that. It was great. And then, yeah, Danny Trejo is in it as well. Yeah. And I actually shot with Danny. I shot a film like a couple years ago. And so it's funny to be in a scene where we're together again, but we're not. You know, it's yeah, like we yeah, did yeah. shoot together. So, yeah. No, you've been, how long have you been officially like auditioning out here and doing this whole like, relax? Last, probably 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, like I out of high school. Like I went to um, school and then I went to do a show in Japan. Oh. I did a musical in Japan what for musical? 13 months. It was like a package deal. You did three shows in 13 months. Whoa. So you did like uh, Blues Brothers and Sesame Street Live and Wicked. How was that? It was different because when I showed up to set or when we were rehearsing with the director, I got the script and it was in Japanese. Oh, whoa. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I got the director <laughs> script. This is Japanese. I speak English. It's fine. I always get this. And they're like, uh, hi, Dozo. And they're like, go ahead. I was like, no, the, the lines that my character's saying, they're in Japanese. And I do not. I do not. Wait, the, sho- the show's in. Oh, my God. You and it's the- like. We, we open in two weeks. And oh I was like, my God. Ah. And so I had to learn the script in Japanese and the songs in Japanese. Wow. I did not know that going in. I literally, did not, I just got so excited that I booked a role and I was like, well, it's an American show. And it's like, yeah. why would an American show go to Japan and like do it in English? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, think, Harvey, think. Right. Um, so it wasn't until I got there, but I learned Japanese really quick. So. <laughs> I mean, I guess you had to. Jesus, that's yeah. so nuts. Yeah. How are To this day, I can't hear the wizard song in Wicked without singing it in Japanese. Really? Because that's the song I had to learn. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if it comes on the radio, I'm like, I'm going to go to the house. 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 There's something oddly calming about that. I don't know why. Have you, uh, because of this, learned any like colloquial Japanese at all? Yeah, I had to learn uh, like to get by. You know, you'd yeah. be surprised how quickly you learn when you're trying to go to the store and ask for milk and you look you know, really crazy going, milk, where's the milk? You know, you're just like <laughs> grabbing things. And they're like, ah, oh, and I was like, ah, oh, I got to learn it. I got to learn it. And um, you'd be surprised how quickly you learn when everyone around you speaks it and you don't. Right. Yeah, you yeah, really yeah. do adapt. You know, like wow. it's like you have to. It's because I think we become lazy, you know. It's mm-hmm. like, why well, try when you know English? You know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And we're going to like Paris and like uh, I was with somebody who was like not trying at all. Mm-hmm. And they went to ask for the bathroom. Excuse me, where's the bathroom? And they're like, oh, pardon. Like, they don't make an effort. But yeah. if I go, pardon, kiss, kiss. And I try to make an effort. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're trying. It's over there. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta show that you're making an effort, you know? That's true. It's like this like idea of like going everywhere and be like, everyone, learn my language. Right. You know? So you were there for 13 months yeah. doing these shows. Mm-hmm. And then did you come straight back from there? I came straight back and I moved to Brooklyn. I moved to New York because okay. I was going to be on Broadway. Oh, hell yeah. I'm on Broadway, baby. It's um, easy. It's easy. Everyone, Everyone can, do, can it. do it. <laughs> and I showed up and I was doing like 5 a.m. cattle calls. Yeah. And I was like, why am I not getting the lead role for Annie? Like, it's like... <laughs> I don't understand. I remember I lived in New York and would go to commercial auditions. I can't sing or dance. And in the same auditioning spaces were the cattle calls for these musicals. And you'd go. Around the block. Yeah. And it'd be like, you could just guess the musical by how everyone was dressed. It's like all these men dressed up like, you know, 20s businessmen. And it's like how to succeed in business. It's like (laughs) auditioning right now. And it was so, and you could tell like who was there for the Apple commercial versus like the musical. (laughs) It was so insane. uh, I have like such respect for musical theater performers and stage performers because it's, I feel like it's, I mean, LA and Hollywood's tough, you know, but it's like, imagine doing eight shows a week. I can't. It's insane. It's insane. And so. And they're not getting paid what people get paid out here to be on TV. It's not the same. Well, that's what made me, you know, because growing up in L.A., I wanted to be a thespian. I want to be a real actor, not a TV actor or film, (laughs) because those are real actors, Uh real stage actors. And I went to school for the whole thing. I went for, you know, um, on a Shakespearean scholarship. I was a Shakespearean actor. And then I realized I wasn't happy. I wasn't like having fun with it. Mm-hmm. And then I found musical theater and I was like, I can do musical theater. It's still stage. Mm-hmm. And then I just realized you, you, unless you're perfect for a role and you're a name, it's really hard to break into it. Yeah. And you can only do the chorus so long because, you know, I've always been short and stout. Like they're not going to go, that guy, he's the <laughs> chorus boy. <laughs> yeah, he can yeah. dance, um, which I can, you know, but they don't assume that. So sure. I was having a really hard time when I was living in New York. And eventually I was like, what am I doing? And my agent back in the legs, like, there's a show you should audition for. I was like, television? I don't think so. <laughs> and eventually, he's like, no, you should do it. And they're like, I don't think so. They're paying this much a week. You know, I've always said television <laughs> is not bad. It's the same thing. It's like the it's, Broadway of uh, TV. It's the same <laughs> thing. You know what? I'm going to give it a go. And I auditioned for it. I booked it. And what I made in a week, you couldn't make it in a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, I can pay for rent. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm actually, you know, I have a place to live. And then I just transferred over to be like, okay, I'll do If it comes up, I'll audition. And I kept auditioning. And I got like a commercial. And I kept getting something. And I kept a small part here and a two line there and a guest star, mm-hmm. eventually leading to like my first series regular. Yeah. Which was uh, huge uh, by Savannah Dooley and Whitney Holzman. Whitney mm-hmm. Holzman, who wrote the script to Wicked. Oh, cool. The musical. Uh, so it was kind of like full circle. Yeah, like I was yeah. like, I am in a musical. <laughs> <laughs> I was delusional. <laughs> I was like <laughs> having delusions of grandeur. I was like, I am in a musical. <laughs> Whitney Holzman. <laughs> you know? uh, but it was perfect for me. And uh, it was such a great platform to start off with. And yeah. uh, got to play a really interesting character and got some great feedback. And it was a great platform. Cool. Yeah. How is audition? now versus the beginning different for you? You know, it was when I first started, it was you'd go to auditions because you just you want the role. But I would go in for a lot of like fat guy number two oh, yeah. and fatty, fatty two by four, <laughs> you know, and the word fat would always be in the description when I was like, guys, be clever about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's like uh, now it, now I think it's the same breakdown, but it's worded differently. OK, they got better. Right. So it's like guy next door may have a couple pounds on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the wording is just different. But before uh-huh. they didn't care, like fat guy, fat, fat, fatty. <laughs> And then I remember like I got auditions and the breakdown wouldn't even have a character name. Really? Like it'd just be like, big guy, must be funny. Quote, must be fat, fat, don't forget the fat part. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> and it was just like, geez, I get it. You know, you want someone funny. Um, <laughs> but it was, uh, I think it's changed in that way. But uh, I think we're going in the right direction. We're just changing and giving people opportunity, people of color, people of size, you know, the opportunity to be leads on shows. Yeah, I saw, I was um, looking at your Twitter and I saw the article where um, you were quoted being like, I never saw anyone like me on TV. Yeah, so I didn't. I, I became grew- that bitch. No, I became <laughs> that bitch. I saw no one who looked like me. So I became that bitch. Um, I think a that was Gandhi quote. or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I remember watching Annie when I was six years old mm-hmm. and I was blown away. That was the first time I saw a musical. And I was just like, mom, I want to be that. Yeah. I want to be an orphan. <laughs> And she looked at me and was like, ¿Qué? And I was like, an orphan. And she was like, oh, no, son actores. And I was like, you're lucky, mom. That's what you told me the description of that was. And she was like, no, son actores. And, you know, that's that's for rich kids, she told me. Oh, wow. And I was like, rich? You have to be rich to play poor on TV? It's like, yep, that's Hollywood. Wow. And I was like, that doesn't make sense to me. She's like, those kids are trained. They have acting coaches and they have, you know, voice and production and speech and all this. And I was like, oh, can I do that? And she's like, no, mijo. <laughs> She's like, oh, where the fuck are we going to get money for that? She's like, single mom, like, you know, Mexican. Yeah. Like, it was just like, where are we going to find the money? And I was like, well, okay, I'll figure it out. I'm six years old. Uh-huh. And then eventually we found out that the YMCA is doing like a improv class for kids in the summer. Uh-huh. And I tell my mom, I'm like, mom, it's only $12.50. Can I have that? She's like, chingado. Like, where the fuck are we going to get money yeah. for that? And he's like, no. And I was like, well, if I get the money, can I do it? And she goes, Miko, if you can get the money, you can do whatever you want. And I was like. That was the first lesson I remember at six years old. I was saying, wow, if you can find your own way, yeah, no one can stop you. Wow. And I said, then I will. I'm six years old. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and literally, we're walking home from school one day, and this guy uh, who's homeless is going through the trash can. I was like, what is he doing, mom? He's like, oh, vende los botes. He sells the cans. Mm-hmm. It's like, you make money off of bottles and cans? And she's like, yeah. I ran into her closet, got a wire hanger, unhooked <laughs> it, and used it as a hook to go through trash cans. And it was smelly and disgusting. Oh, got my cuts. God. It took me two weeks to earn the $6 and like 25 cents. Oh I didn't my- have enough. And I had to work another two weeks selling after school, getting all the cans. I went to parties and quinceañeras. I would pretend I was in the party. And I was like, oh, I'm the little kid. No one suspects me. And literally collect all these fucking cans. It took me a month. I took the class. It was like an hour and a half. They divided the kids like six-year-old to like eight or nine-year-olds and the older kids together. We didn't do anything special. We walked around pretending to be a lion. Now you're a tiger. Yeah. And now it was improv. And we're like, wow, this is magical. And after I was done with an hour and a half class, I remember thinking, do I want to do this? It was an it was a month long process to uh-huh. get that one hour and a half. Oh, yeah. And then I thought, yeah, because no one's ever going to give you anything. You have to go out and get it. Wow. What an inspiring little kid. Yeah. That's nuts. So that was me at six and kept doing it. I worked at a swap meet when I was seven, sold chocolate store to door when I was eight. Wow. I kept, I've been working since I was six, not professionally. You like, understand hard work. Absolutely. All the way around. Immigrant, you know, uh, parents, they wow. teach it. Yeah. How, um, how much do you tell your family about the parts that you play? Like, do they, are they, do they know all about it? Well, my mom, anything I do that has to do anything in Spanish, mm-hmm. she loves. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I won a GLAAD award, you know, for uh-huh. uh, for Raising Hope. And I was like, mom, I won a GLAAD award, you know? And she was like, oh, que bueno. <laughs> like, she's like, that's nice. But I'm the, I was the spokesperson for Metro PCS in Spanish for uh-huh. like years ago, for like a couple of years. And she, that <laughs> was the Oscar. Like, when friends come over, es mi hijo de Metro PCS. <laughs> dile de Metro PCS, dile. No, do it, do it for them. Do it for them. Do it for them, mom. Mom, that was like eight years ago. Do it for them. Do it, do it, do it for them. Do it. And I was like, mom, you're winking at me. I'm not gonna do a fucking commercial for you. And then she gets mad because I don't do it. But that to her, I've already like hit like yeah. you know the pinnacle of like professionalism um, and like uh, accolade. That's so sweet. Have you yeah. brought her to any like red carpet events or anything? Yeah, I brought her to a couple of things. Like it's, my mom doesn't get blown away by like you know yeah. she'll be next to like Tom Cruise and she'll be like, ¿Quién es él? Like, you know, she's not like, <laughs> she's not faced by like celebrities, but if you like, it's because it's to her, that's not her world. You know what I right, mean? Right, right. But if it's like a, a Mexican actress or Latin American actor, like, oh my God, that's the, you know, like the girl from that reality show. And I was like, isn't that like Real Housewives in Mexico? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. And to her, she's like, that's the, the best thing oh, ever. Oh, Mexican yeah. Dynasties. I just started Mexican watching. Mexican Dynasty. I started there watching that like Obsessed, crazy. Obsessed, yeah. Well, you and your mom and I should hang out. <laughs> Really fun. Um, that's really sweet. Also, it's kind of grounding to have that kind of energy at those events because I always get very overwhelmed yeah. in those situations. Oh, I always bring like my family with me. Uh, they're hanging out with me tonight. Like they could be around celebrities. They still like, you know, yeah. to them, they're like, whatever. You know? <laughs> they don't care. Unimpressed. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Um, okay. What's been, what was like the hardest scene to shoot on set for? 
what um, we do in the shadows. I think, well, I don't even know if it was hard for me. I mean, it was a little bit, but I feel bad for the vampires because when they're flying. Yeah. We did a scene outside and it's winter and it's Toronto. Mm, and mm-hmm. so I think one day was like negative 10. It was Thanksgiving weekend. We're oh, shooting God. over Thanksgiving holiday and uh, we did a scene and Kayvon went up. And when he came down, um, before he went up, he was just like, you know, sniffling because it's really freezing yeah. cold. And I was like, wow, this is really, really cold. And it gets colder as you go uh-huh. higher. And so he went up like probably like 10 floors of a building uh-huh. and flew. And then when he came down, he literally just had frozen like <laughs> snot on his beard. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, uh. And then we just kept rolling. And he's like, yeah, more. And, like, <laughs> and, like, dude, the scene. and I was like, master, um, I'll. I'll get that for, you know, <laughs> oh, and it's, uh, he didn't feel it because he was so numb. Wow. Like it was just, you were numb. And so I feel bad for them a lot. They had scenes where they're outside a window during the LARPing scene yeah, where yeah. they're spying on the kids that mm-hmm. they might uh, use uh, as meals. They're outside. It started like a gush of wind came and they're on, you know, cranes and, and like hanging on strings and they just started hitting the building. Oh my like God. Like ragdolls. <laughs> they just started hitting the building and they were just like into each other. On the, <laughs> it was just, I was watching and I was laughing actually. I think I was taking a video. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, okay, I hope they're okay. Yeah, I hope they're okay. But it was, uh, it was, I think the weather was just like the only part that yeah. was like, the hardest part. Well, I saw on your Instagram the videos of you flying for the first time. Yeah. That was the first ones. That looks so yeah. hilarious. It's so weird because I was looking forward to fly the whole season. Uh-huh. And I've, I'm supposed to fly in the fir- in the second episode of the season. So okay. we shot the pilot in the second episode. And the first scene I shot for a second episode in Toronto was with came on. It was mm-hmm. a second before I flew. And the last scene I shot three months later is me flying. So oh, it's kind of cool that I shot cool. that 20 minute. 20 second scene within three months of each other. Oh, that's so very it was like cool. him putting his hand out, me grabbing it, and the next shot is us flying together. Whoa! Yeah, so flying. So I like nuts. flying. I don't mind it. Even the bruises, I don't mind. It looks very fun. It also makes you guys look like badasses. Yeah. Yeah. I like that action stuff. I like all that, you know, badass, like flying action stuff. All that's, that's super good. super cool. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, I want to ask about haters back off. I oh, want to yeah. hear worst auditioning stories, all of it. Okay, of it. we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. No. Not- This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by BetterHelp. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. They offer licensed professional counselors who are specialized in such issues as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQ matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and own pace. And anything you share is confidential. And it's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions, as well as chat and text with your therapist. And if for some reason you're not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. And best of all, it's very affordable and not too deep with Grace Helbig listeners. will get 10% off your first month with the discount code GRACE. So why not get started to Day, go to betterhelp.com slash grace, then simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get you matched with a counselor that you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash grace, discount code grace. Well, spill the guts. What's what's that going on with the finale? I mean, we're okay. recording this before the finale right. officially comes out, but by the time this comes out, the finale will be... So in the finale, we do, uh, well, I do some blood work for everyone, Ancestry. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and it's kind of like an Ancestry, but not the same. Uh, we didn't use that name. Uh, but we find out that uh, people's um, blood is from a long lineage of different things. Like, uh, for example, Kayvon's blood comes from um, a very famous vampire. And mm-hmm. my blood comes from, weirdly enough, a very famous vampire hunter. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can guess, uh, guess the name. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can guess the name. Vampire Vamp- Hunter? Yeah, Killer. Vampire Killer? I don't, yeah. why am I blanking? Uh, anyone, the, anyone, anyone? Anyone, Vampire Any, Killer. Anyone? I probably- <laughs> <laughs> so we got a famous vampire who's Nosferatu, right? That's uh-huh. a famous vampire who's a vampire killer. Van Helsing. Oh, yeah. that's right. So my, I'm an offspring of Van Helsing. <gasps> that's going to be so fun. Yeah. So now I know what I'm drawn to vampires so much because oh, I think I want to be one. But okay. is it because I'm meant to? Because if you watch the season, I've accidentally killed two vampires so far. Mm-hmm. The Baron 
and then one of the guards that's right, that's at right. the council. That's right. By accident, but really good at it. Like, yeah. weirdly enough, I killed him easily. Yeah, it's in I my know. blood. The killing the Baron uh, was one of the most hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> got the roses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hilarious and sad at the same time. Also, that suit, is it a suit that he's wearing? Yeah, it's literally like he... Because it's, it's terrifying. It's a full body thing. Like, it's full... <sighs> Like, he's amazing. Like, um, we just saw him a couple weeks, or last week, actually, for FYC, for your consideration, cool. the show, if you're an Emmy voter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's he's really great. Uh, he takes hours just to get into that Ugh, whole thing. It looks so insane. Yeah. Uh, it's, Doug Jones. It's so creepy. Yeah. That and do you recognize him? He's been in everything. I, I he's probably— the creature in The Shape of Water. That's oh, him. okay. He is Billy in um, Hocus Pocus. Remember when he, his mouth is zipped up? Oh, yeah. And he cuts it open and moths come out. That's him. So he's done all of the, everything. All he's all done the, everything. He's, he's had, in Star Trek now. Yeah. He's had stuff put all over his body. All the time. That's what he's made a career out of. He's like, I always have to be in the all guy. these things. Yeah. Well, he there's one moment that, and I was a little high, I'll admit, <laughs> uh, that he, when he first comes out and he notices the cameras, like the documentary crew for the first time, and he looks right down the lens of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I was horrified. I was like laughing, but I was like, this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. I don't know how. And you're high. <laughs> I, yeah. So it's like, yeah, very intense. I was like, I could not be on this set. Like I wouldn't be able to act uh, next to this. I would be yeah. actually scared. Yeah. It's a really fun. You come visit the set in Toronto. It's really fun. I would love to. It's it's like very Victorian, like the home is really old fashioned. Like you're walking through the set and all the details, like the set decorators and everyone have done an amazing job. Like it it's, looks they really don't leave cool. anything untouched. Like even the paper that you touch, there was books from like 1690s. Like it was wow. like the books that we have in the actual library. They will never really like, you know, open yeah. and show you inside, but it doesn't matter. Like the actual That's book so is cool. that old. It's so cool. Well, you shot another series up in Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Haters Back Off. Yeah, with Colleen. With Colleen. Yeah. Um, how did you guys meet each other? Colleen and I went to school um, next to each other. Oh, okay. So, well, I was doing musical theater. She was doing musical theater in the Pacific and I was doing it at Citrus right next door. Okay. Um, she also dated a really good friend of mine in college. Okay. Um, David Lamoureux. Uh-huh. And that's how we met. I went to see her show because David invited me. He was like, hey, you should go see my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I think it was like um, Suzical, the musical or something. Okay. And I went to see her and I met her. And we just hit it off and we just stayed in touch. And eventually they broke up with their friends and mm-hmm. uh, we stayed friends. And it was just like this energy that we had together. Then yeah. we get together and just make stupid videos. <laughs> I lo- Well, that's how I watched her, uh, all of her like Instagram stories and Snapchats and stuff when she was up in Vancouver. Is that where you guys shot? Yeah. Yeah, shooting this, and you were in it, and that was the first time I got introduced to you. I was like, this boy is the most hilarious <laughs> human I've ever this seen. This boy? Who is this boy? Uh, and then I didn't realize that you were actually shooting, uh, you were the fish store manager? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that you were actually shooting it. I was like, that's so cool. That was all her idea, too, because they wanted to cast out of Vancouver as a local. Okay. And she brought me up to the cast, and she's like, no, we have to cast that role out of Vancouver. They're not going to fly anyone over. And she really wanted me to do it, and she's like, I wrote it for you. And she, I was like, well, you know, if it works out, it works works out. Yeah, I, always, yeah. I always like when my friends, you know, want to work together, but it's never like, oh, he didn't put me in your show. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And so when she said, you know, I have an idea. Like, can you come to the table read uh-huh. and just do the table read? And uh-huh. I was like, yeah, I can do the, you know, yeah, of course. And then she's like, yeah, just do the table read. And I went to the table read and I do it. And the cast was like, oh, he's great. He's got to do it. <laughs> he's gotta, are we right, guys? And then, and then she played like, oh, do you want him to do it? Yeah. That if you want, you know, yeah, yeah, she yeah. was so clever and smart. And that's how I got the part is that I had oh, to go in and show them that like no one else could do the part. She mm-hmm. wrote it for me. And, uh, and once I did it, they were like, yeah, he's like, and then they, I came back like, you know, episodes later. That's awesome. How yeah. was shooting that? That was great. Yeah. I mean, that was, um, Colleen is very efficient. She knows what she wants and yeah. she d- gets it done and, and doing it with a smile. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's hard to find that sometimes when you work and people get stressed out. And uh, I think it was Tina Fey who wrote in her book, like, you never want to walk down the hall at 4 a.m. across someone that you don't want to be working with. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she surrounds herself with <laughs> people who, you know, are upbeat and cheerful and love what they do. Yeah. And, uh, the series is great, you know, and she did that from a character she developed on, you know, on YouTube, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm always like, you it's amaze so me, you're such a role model, you know, it's like, you're Our killing work it. ethic is unbelievable. No. It's you, like, she's a baby now and she's still like going stronger than and ever. And she's going to be touring again. Yeah. Like it's, I'm like, what am I, I'm just watching reality TV. I'm watching Mexican <laughs> dynasties all day. <laughs> which isn't bad. I which mean, isn't bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's for me, it's, it's research. It's its own art form. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Also the filth. What is this? 
The film series is actually um, a series that just premiered in Inside Out in Toronto. Okay. Uh, this past weekend, uh, it's the biggest LGBTQ film festival um, in the world. That's awesome. And it's the longest running one, so okay. it's been running for a really long time. So we premiered our series. I'm a producer on that. I make a little cameo, cool. but I really love the story. It's directed by my writing partner Jamie Holt, okay. um, who's an amazing director. And uh, we need more female directors. I'm always yeah. saying that. So she directed this, and I uh, produced it. We're super proud of it. It's about uh, two queer friends. Uh, in the world in LA and just um, every day, just millennial living, you know? Yeah. And uh, we have great cameos. We have Danny Franzesi, we have Cassie Skirbo, we have cool. so many cameos that came and played with us. So I'm really excited about it. We, our next stop is, um, it's going to be in San Francisco and then we're going to premiere it everywhere for everyone to see. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, have nice. To, is there a timeline on when that'll be? You can get all the information on the filthseries.com. If Sweet. people just go, they can, everything's on the, the um, actual like promo and the, cool. the concept of all that. Yeah. That's so exciting. Are you trying to kind of pivot more into like the writing producing area? Yeah, yeah, I am. I think for, you know, I've been writing a lot in the last couple of years just because I got tired of waiting for someone to give you the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's really inspirational to see friends who make their own content like Colleen and, um, and Todd Rick Hall and yeah. all them. And yourself, you know, like people who create their own uh, content. So I, I was like, should I do something like that? And Colleen wanted me to like, you know, you should do a YouTube thing, you know, yeah. and get on that. And I was like, yeah, you should, but I can't devote myself to it because it's like a weekly thing. And I was like, I don't know where I'm going to be like in two weeks. Um, and so I said, I'm going to write. I'm just going to write, you know, what I know. And I've been writing stories and pitching them. And, cool. you know, some things are up in the air now. It's a Sweet. lot of stuff based on true life events. And, you know, have a pretty interesting story, like the whole like being six years old and all that. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> like, talk about work ethic. Jesus. So I'm putting all that down and, you know, um, making stories out of it you know cool. so I'm doing that a lot now and uh I love it I actually That's do because awesome. you're not at the mercy of someone else telling you you're good enough mm -hmm. you know it's hard for like a character actor you know I'm a character actor and I'm a person of size and I'm Mexican you know and yeah. all these things and those were seen when I first started going to your earlier question as strikes against you right you know so people were like well you're already short and you're already fat and you're already this so those were strikes that yeah. were like against you and so you were trying to like hey why not me you mm -hmm. know why not and then you have to show them why not it's like look I could play this because it would be a story like this and yeah. then you could see me as why not am I the heartthrob why not am I the love interest you know and just recently started doing like plus size modeling, you know what yeah. I mean? Or people reach out, they're like, hey, you should do it. And oh, it your Instagram is on fire right now. <laughs> These photo shoots you're doing are amazing. Weren't you just like in Utah or something? Yeah. Yeah. That it was looked a Beautiful. Wasn't that crazy? Yeah. It's so beautiful. So yeah, stuff like that where if you would have asked me maybe even 10 years ago, I would have been like, oh, that's, I think you got the wrong person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then I started realizing, why the fuck not? You mm -hmm. know, why not me? Because you limit yourself because you're told to limit yourself. Yeah. And so I got tired of it. I'm like, I'm not limiting myself anymore for anybody. You yeah. Know? So I just started being me. Be you, boo. Do you get messages now from people that are thankful for you putting yourself out there and like creating, paving your own way? Yeah, I get messages all the time. Like That's people, great. you know, even when I did the first series uh, and I played Alistair, mm -hmm. uh, which Alistair was like the first, the character uh, at the end of season one was going to cross over questioning um, if he was trans mm -hmm. and uh, going uh, M to F. And so that was the first time, that was a challenge for me because I'm not, you know, I'm yeah. not trans, but it was about to go in that direction. So the wow. last episode we see that. And he was, he was queer, you know, yeah. and we, we established that earlier in the season. And I just had all these like messages from kids, in middle America, like, you know, they're like in Ohio or whatever. They're like, thank you so much. One of them was really touching. It was just like, I was going to kill myself, you know? Wow. And I was like, wow. And it's like, but I saw that someone like you is on TV and playing someone like that character. And I relate to that character so much. And I was like, see what we do is important, you yeah. know? And so representation matters, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, that was the moment when I realized I was like, yes, this totally matters. That's so awesome. I still get messages like, how do you do it? Where do you like shop for cute clothes? Because <laughs> it's like, you know, eventually yeah. I want to open like a store for like, you know, fabulous and plus size, you know, because I like, get your full entrepreneurial self right? going. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, because you were always asking that. And it's like, yeah, it's like uh, they make it hard for uh, people of size to like dress, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's like, oh, here's a potato sack. And it's like, you'll wear that, <laughs> you know? Make it fashion. Yeah, make it fashion, make it work. Yeah. And it's like, I'll make it work, you know? <laughs> I will take that potato sack and do it. Watch. I love um, that. Yeah. Uh, do you have any notable auditions that were really horrible for you? I always try to be prepared. Like I always yeah. feel like um, if I go into an audition, my mentality is I want to obviously book it, right? Sure. But my uh, my goal is to book the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I go into an audition, my audition better blow you away. It doesn't matter. I could go in for the wrong part mm -hmm. completely. Wrong gender, wrong rate, like anything. But mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I need to blow you away. Yeah. And I've gone to auditions where... 
um, I knew the right the part wasn't right. Like I went for the internship was a mm-hmm. part that I knew was not right for me. Yeah, but I was like, I feel like I can make it my own feel. And I got an audition, got to meet the director, and we both knew that was like that's not what it was written down. This, right, what you are is not what was in the, you know. Right, strip. right, right. And I just did my best, and I did my version of it. And I was like, this is what I'm doing. You know, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it well. And he was laughing on the floor. Uh-huh. And then two weeks later, I got a call. He wrote a part in the film for me. Whoa, that's awesome. And that's how I booked that role. Really? Yeah, I've always said I'm not above anything. Like and after that, there was an audition for a Nickelodeon show that my agent was like, it's two lines and it's a one day guest star. Let's pass. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, no, let me see. Well, tell me more about the character. Oh, they're at a funeral. Why at the funeral? Because he's a cousin. So he's family. And mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, well, family never goes away. <laughs> Smart. And then smart, he's like, smart. if you want to do it, it's two lines. And I was like, okay, I go to do the two lines. Uh-huh. I audition. I book it. Uh, within two weeks after shooting that episode, the, I met the writers and everyone. They loved me. They wrote a whole episode for me. Wow. And then I, I recurred on that show for four seasons. Wow. So, I mean, that I think is just great general advice for everyone of taking like a seed of something. Yeah, and plant see, your seeds. Yeah, see how much it can grow for yeah. you. Absolutely. I always say um, there's no harm in planting a seed, you know, yeah. like there's like either it sprouts and something comes out of it or it's something you planted and you leave alone and you water it once in a while or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if nothing comes from it, that's OK because you have the whole garden. That's so cool. You know? I think that's so fun and very inspiring. Uh, what's something like what do you do when you get home from a long day on set or like how do you unwind? I watch reality TV. What do you watch? <laughs> oh Tell me. I will talk for I'm hours about this. I'm obsessed with all the housewives. Yes. I literally caught up with the last two episodes uh, for Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, I caught up this morning. Yeah. And I've met like Kyle and Lisa. Have you? Real, I have at a party and stuff. And oh. um, and I just, uh, now that they're fighting, I'm just like, no. like I just, <laughs> <laughs> You were the one friendship yeah, I thought was one, genuine. I believed in you. I, we we all were rooting for, for you. <laughs> Um, so that's the one that I kind of go to the housewives are all, all across the board, New York, oh, Atlanta. Love it. Um, yeah, all of them just like obsessed and that's what I kind of been doing. And people are, what do you do for fun? I literally get in pajamas and like, that's okay. Yes. We have the same hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> and people are like, you don't you go out? And you know, and it's like, I'm like ah. in my mind. Yeah. And it's like, most of the time I go out, it feels like it's work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, if I go out, it is, oh, there's a cool party. That's work. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you're just socializing, networking, whatever. But when I stay home, I'm just like, ah, reality TV, man. Mm-hmm. Would there be any reality TV show that you would go on? Um, yeah. Like, um, let me see. Nicole's show, the um, nailed it. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes! That show's so fun. Yeah, I would go on that because I think it's I can't help it. Like when I'm watching it, I generally like do commentary. Yeah. Whoever <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, with. Oh, you'd be great at yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm like, I should be on the show. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, and Felicia was just on it, so right. she said, um, she's like, yeah, you're next. You should do it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I can show. see that happening yeah. for sure. I should do that. I'm gonna- <laughs> Make a note. <laughs> Make a note. Uh, to do. Um, okay, what would you title your memoir? Hmm, I would title my memoir <laughs> Memoirs of a Geisha <laughs> Minus the Sha. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Write it down. Uh, okay, let's say you got invited to the Met Gala mm-hmm. this last go round, and the theme being camp. Mm-hmm. What would you dress up as? I mean, I would just go full camp. You know, I was surprised of how like some people were like yeah. very like I'm wearing a tank. Top. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like a little under like you know what I mean. Like it was just yeah. like watching some people walk in the car. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing there? Yeah, camera off of them. Camera yeah. off of them. Go to three. Go to camera three. <laughs> go to go to camera three. Steve, go to camera three. Like I feel like I'm directing the yeah, back out, yeah. like, because it just felt like people. Some people just didn't put effort into it. You know. Yeah. And as you're the motherfucking Met Gala, you and know you what get I mean? the best theme. Ever? I was Why so excited. Throw it away? Yeah. I really liked uh, Katy Perry's um, burger change in the bathroom. Yes, I saw the video of her and getting J-Lo, into the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> and J-Lo and then, like, she I think, does who, not have time yeah, for it. Not up for it. Like, <laughs> and I love J Lo and J Lo walks by and then I think who was visiting her assistant or something like yeah. Hey J Lo and she's like, hey girl. <laughs> It's also, it's also so weird to see J-Lo in a public restroom. Yes, yeah, and the bathroom was, I thought it was going to be like chandelier. Yeah, it was, it was like, like a bus t- stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was subway like, tile. And I was like, 
like, this woman just sat down in like a half million dollar dress on a dirty toilet. <laughs> and I'm watching that's what it. I was thinking. And also, that wasn't the most flattering like area to be because she literally just comes out of this like in the door like, ah, ah, like you guys, the Met Gal is falling apart. She also did not wash her hands. No. So, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. She walks right by. Oh, but also, man. to be fair, if I was watching Katy Perry like frantically scoop on this like foam burger costume you want to get out of there like, I'm, out. Be out. I'm out I think Jayla did the smart thing she was like bye yeah, you know? yeah. and give her like because for all you know she, that was a serial killer right? in a burger <laughs> outfit like she doesn't know but I did appreciate um, the camp that Katy Perry brought I mean I think yeah, everyone kind of change, like, anticipated her that's yeah. like her normal aesthetic anyway yeah I think she nailed it because it, if it was ever a Met Gala that was up her alley like yeah. that was it that so was it. she killed it and had costume change I appreciate a good costume change say a Gaga came in hot yeah I loved it she's coming in hot <laughs> Come in hot, Rena. <laughs> is, <laughs> is there anyone in Hollywood you haven't met yet that's like you would have a freak out moment? Yes. Um, I think if I ever ended up meeting or even working with both of these ladies with um, Kate Winslet and Meryl Streep. Ooh. Can you imagine? I, I that, mean, that'd be insane. That, like, whatever they want to play, like, you know, sisters <laughs> or daughter, mother, dynamic duo, and I'm the paper boy. Who has, like, two lines. So, like, hey, you got, oh, I fucked it up. I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't even act out in a make-believe scenario with Kate Winslet and Meryl Streep. I just fucked up my audition right now. Talking about worst auditions, that was it. You did it today. Today's the <laughs> You're day. You're welcome. Um, I would love to see that movie, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Even if it's just a scene. Yeah. I would love Sign it. Sign me up. Um, okay, we're going to take one last break. When we get back, we have a bunch of Twitter and Instagram questions Ooh, for you. Okay. So we'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by a Bud Light Chilada. Are you craving flavor and refreshment this summer? Pick up one of the three flavors of Bud Light Chilada, original, extra lime, and the newest member of their family, mango. It's the perfect drink for having a brunch on the beach or just hanging out with friends in the sun. The original Chilada brings you the crisp, refreshing taste of Bud Light with the rich signature taste of Clamato Tomato Cocktail. This distinctive blend delivers a flavor that truly refreshes and the Chilada Extra Lime delivers a citrusy spin on the classic Chilada flavor, and the Chilada Mango brings a tropical touch to the summertime favorite. To best enjoy your Chilada, gently rotate the chilled can once before pouring, then pour over ice and garnish with a slice of lime, some celery, or some mango. Salt the rim of your glass or add a dash of hot sauce for even more of a kick. Pick up a Bud Light Chilada today and learn more at BudLight.com. Bud Light Chilada, flavor that refreshes. So, okay, before we get into these internet questions, I'm going to ask you the two questions, ask every single guest that is on the podcast. Okay. And the first is who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Throw cold spaghetti at? Yes. Um, for fun or like because I hate them? You're. It's up to you. If I hate them, Hitler. Okay. And then if I love them, um, Lucille Ball. Oh, that would be perfect. Because she the, would have fun with it. You oh, know? she'd make it a full scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just be be watching great. the whole thing. <laughs> uh, okay, the other question is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. Okay. So mine is college jogging front lawn. Mine is college late <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> I like that you had an immediate response. Yeah. Some people are like, I've never had I've a, never, I'm I've never had an issue. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into these questions. Someone wants to know, who are some of the comedians you grew up idolizing or got inspired by? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, like, again, I didn't see a lot of people who look like me on TV. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, you know, the closest thing would be like George Lopez, like growing up watching oh, him. Oh, okay. Um, and then later on, like Fluffy was really funny to watch the comedian, but uh -huh. early like reruns that I'd watch as a kid would be like John Candy. Mm. Um, yeah, that was a good one. Um, Bill Murray, like in Ghostbusters, John, Dan Aykroyd. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, that kind of vibe. Um, my early on like inspirations were, uh, they were all white male, you know, because yeah. there was no one to look like me. So I was looking for them. I was really looking for them. And it wasn't until later that I started seeing some. So that was my foundation. And then it led to like, yay, you know. Yeah. And I can appreciate the craft from from anyone who's an actor from any background, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, someone wants to know what special vampire skill would you like to have? Flying. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I love the idea that you can fly. Like, that's so cool. That was my favorite thing to shoot was so, the plane scene. <laughs> so basically, you are your character. I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mind blown. I love it. <laughs> uh a lot of people want to know what it, what's it like to work around a voice as amazing as Matt Berry's. Oh man, his voice! Like it's he nuts. Makes, yeah, he just makes everything funny. You know, his voice is so cool. Um, he doesn't have to say it much because he's so funny. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just. Uh, yeah. What was your first impression of everyone on set? You know, when I met everyone uh, again, we hadn't we didn't do like a table read or a chemistry read or anything. They just flew from London. Oh wow! And I was literally the only American um, there when we first met. Um, and then Mark, uh, is also in the, in the series, but we had a sh shot together. So Mark and I are the only Americans and we had no scenes together. Oh, wow. So all my scenes were with all the vampires, with all the blood sucking vampires, uh -huh. the vampire. but, uh, it was just weird because, you know, it's British humor too. Yeah. So like Natasha's hilarious and they all have accents. And for me, it was the accent getting like, I'm not used to like such British accents, you right, know? So right. then they would say something or it's a phrase or like, you know, and I was like, what, is, what does that mean? He's like, oh, it means like, uh, you know, like uh, whatever, you know, yeah. the description was. And I, it, that's what took me a second. But the first thing that I thought of when I met them was like, I hope we just all get along. Get along. Yeah. yeah. So that was the thing. And everyone did. So it worked out. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Okay, someone wants to know who was your favorite teacher? Um, growing up, my favorite teacher probably Mr. Miller in third grade because uh, I would sing and I was that annoying kid. Uh -huh. So after like you know going to some improv classes, I got a lot of confidence. Uh huh. And so I'd be in class, like la la, ah, I could <laughs> sing anything. We sing the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd be over the top from C to shine, D C, and he'd be like, you you do that, and like he really encouraged me. Oh, that's great. Like most teacher would be like that's enough you know yeah. and he really did and he encouraged me and um he told my mom where i could like sign up for stuff and like uh host things like rodeo like it was weird like he Whoa. really kind of became like a junior manager i was gonna say it sounds like he's managing yeah you know? but never in a pushy way like it was yeah. like your son has a gift he wants to do this let him do it you know yeah and he really did and i remember being so thankful that in my high school graduation i was like i wonder what mr miller's doing and i try to look him up and i was like hmm, i should invite him to my graduation because i felt so accomplished as a graduating high school Aww. Because I really could have gone the other direction. I was so like, you know, I was a loud kid in class. Mm -hmm. I probably would have failed all my classes, you know, if I didn't have any kind of structure um, given to me because, you know, of theater. Yeah. And so I called him up and invited him to my grad. And he drove all the way down from Esperia, where that's where I went to school in third grade. And he drove all the way down and came to my graduation. Oh, that's so, so yeah. sweet. Yeah. Well, he's a big fan of the podcast, so he's listening. Oh, okay. He'll Yay. hear this message. Yay. <laughs> uh, so wants to know, what's been your worst acting job? Ooh, um, my worst acting job, um, like worst acting because it was my, my worst acting or was it because experience probably was? I would assume like in the experience of it. Um, that's okay because you'll never see it. It never came out. <laughs> 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 you just look at my IMDb credits and you probably could figure, you know, those oh, out. Yeah? But some things you shoot and they never come out and thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone wants to know, what's your favorite pick me up dance song? Ooh. I think anything Britney, really? just like Britney Toxic comes out. Do you follow her on social media? Yeah. 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 And I've been following her. I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Just I, because I don't like the fact that she has to make a video saying, for those of you who think this isn't me posting a video, <laughs> it is me. And then she keeps looking off to the camera and I was like, well, yeah. who is there? Someone's who is with you, girl? It. Yeah. yeah, girl, who is with you right now? But then it cuts to her doing a fashion yeah. show and it's clearly not on a tripod. Yeah. <laughs> who is holding this camera? It's like, for those of you who think that it's not me, it's definitely me. I am holding a selfie right now. And both her hands are next to her. And I'm like, you're not holding that, Brit. Like, Brit, who is there? Wink twice if you need help. Uh, is there anyone else that you, like, are obsessed with on social media? On social media? Um, no. Not, like, obsessed. I like I like to scroll through everything, but not, like, obsessed. Do you have a favorite platform that you prefer? I think IG. Yeah. Yeah. I think just because it's easier, you can post everything at once. Twitter I was doing for a while, but then you don't get, like, the instant gratification of watching someone's made yeah. up life. Yeah, <laughs> your fully <laughs> curated life. Yeah. Um, oh, I am obsessed with somebody, but I won't even say their name because I just watched it because it's so hilarious. Like they touch up everything. Like their photos are so touched oh, up. Oh, yeah. And it's like, but the 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 goal is always like, living my best life, live healthy. And it's like, 
<laughs> thighs shrunken, oh, arms no. shrunken. You could just tell they've like remodified their body. And I was like, why are you saying that? Like, that's not even what you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the shadow of them in the back is like the real figure. It's different. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, that is not you. That is not you. Uh, no, that's what I love seeing like Real Housewives and people do that to their photos. Like, wasn't there that thing Lindsay Lohan did it and like the like wall or something or a staircase Could behind her was like wavy. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, mm, you did something <laughs> weird here. Um, someone wants to know, do you do stand up anywhere? I do stand up sometimes. Yeah. Um, I used to do stand up at the ice house down in Pasadena. Okay. Um, in different places in LA too, but uh, I rarely do. I do it when somebody calls me like, Hey, we're a spot. You want to do it? And I was like, yeah, I don't like to like plan like my show's coming up in three months, you know, right, right, I don't right. do that. Not yet anyways. Um, just because I've been writing you know, the last couple yeah. of years, but, um, I should get back to it. So maybe I will. Maybe. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know what familiar would you like to have? Ooh, like anybody as familiar? I think so. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I think Zach Efron has a good work ethic. So <laughs> Zac Efron. <laughs> probably, right? Like I'm just like Zach Efron would probably be like, ah, you know, whatever you need. Uh yeah. I I mean, I think he'd be a very I think his work ethic is really well. <laughs> he and does. Work really he well. works really hard. <laughs> On his body and like in his projects and yeah, his work ethic is high. Uh, favorite thing about doing haters back off? My favorite thing was working with Colleen. Just like uh, we don't get to see each other as much as we would want, and so if it's work, it's still fun, you know. So yeah. we get to see each other. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, last question. Uh, someone says, Harvey, you simply emulate beauty. Teach me your ways. Oh, that's so sweet. It's very sweet. Oh, that's really nice. Um, thank you. That's see just. Do you, and if you inspire someone, that's all you can ask for. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, this has been so fun. Yeah. Thank you for making time for this. Thanks for having me. We'll miss it. Before we go completely, every guest that makes time for our little thing here gets a personalized fortune cookie from us to them. Personalized? Mm -hmm. Should I open it? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Ooh, can I eat it? Yeah, if, yeah, that's a you choice. <laughs> that's if you want. <laughs> Vampires are real, and thank the heavens, Ruth Gator Ginsburg is one. <laughs> We're holding on to her. She's she, not going anywhere. She would be the coolest if she, if she, well, she probably Talk is. about like a great familiar. Yeah. Uh, RBG? Yeah. Uh, that'd be incredible. But she's more powerful as a vampire, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, okay, where can people find what you're up to if they don't know? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Harvey Gian. That's my full name, at Harvey Gian. Perfect. And anything other than season two coming up? Working yeah, on some stuff in the background? I am uh, working on some projects right now. Can't really talk about it. Okay. Um, but uh, some cool stuff. I'm going to be shooting this summer um, a film. So nice. be on the lookout for that. Awesome. And The Filth? And The right? Filth. Go to thefilthseries.com and you can get all your information there. We have a great cast. And if you are in San Francisco later in June, mm -hmm. come up to the film festival up there and Sweet. we'll say hi. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. Yeah. This has been really fun. Guys, we'll see you next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Bye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too Not deep. deep. With Grace Helbig. Whatever struggles you're facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist and anything you share. It's completely confidential and best of yet, it's truly an affordable option. Not too deep with Grace Helbig listeners. Get 10% off your first month with a discount code GRACE. So why not get started? Go to betterhelp.com slash grace and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor that you'll love today. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and edited by Melissa D. Monts, writing by Diane Kang, production assistance by Katrina Henning, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. Mm -hmm.